Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me today is the director of Why for Life. It's Michelle Bauman. Thank you so much for being back with us today. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. We're so glad to have you. Uh, Michelle and I are getting to be friends uh, because we get to hang out every once in a while. I got to go to the March for Life with you uh, here back in January. It was my very first time. And it was honestly, um, it, it it was one of those things that I don't think I would have wanted to do without you. Um, and we're going to kind of get into this today. Uh, it was my first sort of experience. I went to Washington, D.C. once when I was 16 years old, but that was a different thing because it was a marching band trip. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sharing a lot about myself right now. But uh, the, the, the march was huge. And it was um, surprising to me just sort of how big a tent the pro-life movement is uh, in America right now. And um, some of that's really, really awesome. And some of that's really, really challenging. Uh, I I remember walking uh, with another uh, member of the Higher Things exec team. um, And we we saw some things there that just weren't helpful, even if they were true. Um, There there was some some pretty graphic imagery sometimes. Uh, There was there was some some anger and I understand this is this is important stuff um but one of the things we we kind of wanted to talk about was how to talk about this as if Jesus actually died for sinners and rose from the dead um because it, it it's true that life issues are are important but it's also very very important that Jesus has something to do with it for us as Christians uh Michelle this this is kind of where we're going today right yeah 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 let's talk about that because that's definitely true uh, the pro-life movement is not all gospel motivated, right? Um, there, there are elements of the pro-life movement. It's great to, to realize that there's multiple people working uh, to save lives and to uphold lives, um, but but we maybe do that in a different way um, than, than the mass population, right? So as Christians um, and as Lutherans, we have a unique perspective that all lives are valuable because God made life and because Jesus redeemed it. And, and starting right there, starting right there, um, shapes and, and reforms or actually forms the way that we view life issues. Uh, we recognize that because of sin, every single person is going to face a life issue in their life, um, whether it's personal or whether it's a loved one who's facing a life issue, and in fact, may even face more than one, right? So we come to the, the idea that, there's, that we're, all, uh, we're all sinners. And we're all going to face hardships and we're all going to make decisions that create life issues in our lives. And what then changes hearts? What would change my heart? Um, What does God do to change my heart? And certainly the law is at work, but the gospel changes lives. The gospel is the hope uh, that this life issue uh, doesn't have to define who we are, doesn't have to define where, where we stay. Right. Um, but, but it obviously it's a reality uh, that we have to, that we have to live with, that we have to walk through, but we are walking through with it with a savior, right? We are walking through it with, with um, a God who wants to carry those burdens for us and who seeks to renew us, uh, to forgive us, to, to make us whole again. So when we address life issues, we want to do it from a gospel motivated perspective with the idea that just because someone is facing a life issue, for example, uh, maybe someone has had an abortion. Um, we don't approach that with, with, um, the law saying you, you, you are such a bad person because you had an abortion or look at, look at what you did to a child. Um, God's already work in the lives, in the life of that individual right? Mm-hmm. And there's going to be some guilt, some shame, maybe even some anger because God is at work and they don't want God to be at work in their lives. But, but the gospel is what, what so- soothes that brokenheartedness, right? What heals uh, that, that brokenness. So we come to that table with, with the opportunity to say, I am so sorry that you have been in a situation where you thought you had to make that decision let me, let me support you and let me affirm that you are still loved by God and that God wants to work in your life to heal this brokenness. And, and that's, that's the difference, right? We don't answer brokenness with more brokenness. We don't answer suffering with more condemnation. We answer it with life 
and with support. So yeah, totally different viewpoint. You dropped so many bums on me and I'm still just kind of in <laughs> awe. Um, you mentioned that, that we don't have to be known by our sin. This is what the law does. It, it, would, it would identify sin. It shows us our sin. I learned it in confirmation. Um, but if I have to be identified by something, I want it to be the gospel. I'm a sinner that Jesus died for. And that idea actually carries forward into people that aren't me too. Uh, so when I look at somebody, I don't just see somebody who is either for or against my cause, but I see a soul that has been affected by it. And that soul that's been affected by my cause one way or another needs Jesus. And so when we, we get to talk to people as if Jesus actually died for them, it doesn't make what happened okay, but also the guilt that they're wrestling with, that the frustrations, the pains, all of the things that come from it, the mental health issues, all of the, you, you said sin breaks stuff. It's brokenness. Um, well, there's something to say to that other than you were wrong. It's Jesus forgives you and Jesus redeems you and Jesus works to bring life to the dying. And I can't think of more potent words to say to somebody who is confronted with death. Right, exactly. Yeah, and that message of hope is, is life-changing, right? It, it enables someone to, to move forward, to have hope for the future, but also um, puts away the past. Right. Um, and, and reforms them, re, re identifies them, just like you said. So, yeah. I can't think of a more important thing than the sinners crushed by the law hearing the gospel, but there would be some that would sort of um, grab hold of this thing and say, you're, you're, you're letting go of, of uh, the, the cause you're, you're, you're pivoting, you're, you're softening something that that's so important. Um, one of the things then that, that we kind of actually have to wrestle with is how to, to sort of deal with the people who are, who are in the face of this. Um, I think that the gospel here actually is, is all the more important, not because it, it sort of softens the cause. If anything, it actually magnifies it. Look at, look at the extent our Lord would go through to, to redeem, but, but also look at the identity given inside of it. As, as much as the world would want to define you by this, as much as you are defining yourself by this, there is something more. You are baptized. That's right. Yeah. And when we, when we look at, um, you know, the, the cause as a whole, right? Um, we as Lutherans, we as Christians have a chance to bring something more to the conversation, right? Because just uh, just legalism, just what you should do and what you shouldn't do, um, again, that's great if we can follow the law perfectly, but we know we can't follow the law perfectly uh, in, in any way, shape or form. We all struggle with, with sexual sins or with some sort of uh, sexual sin, or maybe we struggle with a health condition, or maybe we str struggle with, with despair. Um, we all, we are all broken. And so we all need the message of hope. So it's not a, a softening, right? Uh, the the pro-life, um, certainly the pro-life um, argument is one that focuses primarily on, on abortion, focuses primarily on the, at the beginning of life. But if we really are a for life people, then we're going to be looking at the whole life in, in, as, as the person as a whole. Um, it can't just be about fixing the problems at the beginning of life and then not looking at, at the relationship that a, a person has with their savior, that a relationship the person has with, with um, their surroundings um, how they view themselves for the rest of their lives, right? Uh, life issues aren't confined to the womb. And, and sometimes they don't even start there, right? So if, if that's where our only focus is, um, then we're missing out on an opportunity to uphold lives in a variety of areas. So that's the other side of the coin that you just, you're, you're, you're a step ahead of me that the other, I mean, the common criticism I, I hear is whenever somebody says pro-life, what you mean really is just don't have abortions. And there's more to it than that. But the, the common criticism is then, so you don't care about the women. You only care about that one thing. And well, if we care about your soul and, and we do, if we actually want to speak peace and address this going forward in light of the gospel, in light of who you are redeemed in Christ, it means that we're not done having this conversation after the law is silenced on this issue because it's either done or you, you you made a better choice. Here we actually get to talk about the care of your soul from this point until eternity. Um, this is this is foundational to how we have to approach this because first, if we set aside the gospel, what hope is there? Uh, but but more, it gives us a chance to talk about, like you said, the whole scope of issues that we have facing life. Right, and there's a variety of ways to do that, and 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 God prepares. 
uh, that work for us to do, right? Uh, he gives us vocations. And one of the ways that we can do that is by looking just look around, right? Look at the vocations God has placed us in um, to see how can we uphold and affirm the lives of the people around us? In what ways are they struggling? So when we look at our family, right? Uh, being affirming in our uh, life, affirming in our family might mean um, sticking up for, for a sibling. It might mean serving dinner. It might mean um, helping your, your, your sibling get to school right? Life work doesn't have to be um, grandiose, and it, it doesn't have to be um, just awe-inspiring. Life work is actually, it's, it's foundationally serving others. It is, it is being the servant, um, as Christ is to us, right? So life work can be done in the home, and, and it's not just confined to the home. It, it, extends onto those other vocations that we've been given. So when, you know, when we're students in school, there is life work to be done, uh, sharing the message that an, another person is important or valuable uh, when they get a poor grade, uh, right? Or when they're being picked on or when they're struggling with their identity, especially um, in today's world, their, their sexual identity, right? Affirming who God has created them to be as, as, um, beautiful handmade beings that have been redeemed and called uh, called to faith in him. And if not yet called, the Holy Spirit is working in their lives to call them, right? So life work can be done in a variety of ways. It can include celebrating. It can include service. It can include education. Uh, it, can, it can include worship, right? Mm -hmm. So there are kind of four areas when we talk to our wife or life teams that we encourage them to be involved in, or when we talk to our students, um, you, you have the opportunity to celebrate life and, and that too is life affirming by throwing birthday parties or celebrating cancer anniversary, cancer free at anniversaries, um, and any sort of anniversary. These are opportunities to uphold life and to affirm that the, the, the individual that God has placed in your life is a gift and was intended as a gift, not only to you, but also to the world. So and, and again, you don't get that message by saying, do this or don't do that. You get the message by saying, God loves you. God created you. You are redeemed. You are his. Love it. Yeah. Love it. That's, that's magnificent. Thank you so much for being a part to share this. Uh, come back again real soon and teach us more stuff. This is fantastic. Okay. Sounds awesome. great. Thanks for inviting me. Anytime. This is the Drive to School podcast. Thanks for tuning in.